You're listening to Big World Network. Phineas Fracture and the Princess of Atlantis, Episode 3. Written by Joseph Gatch. Read by Michael Young. Darkness. Pressure. Splitting pain. Phineas Fracture slowly opened his eyes, methodically testing all of his limbs and joints, and then taking a deep breath. He was eventually satisfied that nothing was damaged, or worse, gone. Other than a stabbing headache and an unusual sense of pressure on his body, he felt perfectly fine. He looked around the room that he had been lying in and found that he was alone. Phineas quickly tried to dismiss the possibility that he was the only survivor, and to convince himself that his companions were somewhere in... wherever this was. The room he was in was spartan at best, containing only a bed, a chair, and a table, which held his belongings. Phineas realized that he was no longer dressed, and that his clothes were dry and neatly folded on top of the table as well. As he donned his outfit, he studied his surroundings. There were no visible lamps or windows, yet the room was awash with a blue-green fluorescence, coming from the walls that amply lit the chamber, which was no more than ten feet square. The walls were made of an odd metallic alloy and were cold to the touch. His next order of business was the door, which turned out to be locked. However, fortune favored Phineas in that his hosts had left him his pocket belt intact. Everything that he would need to effect an escape was in that belt. It was a simple lock, and within a minute, Phineas was rewarded with a click and the door slid to the side. Phineas put on his belt and left his remaining belongings behind, not wanting to be hampered by the excess weight. He stepped into the outside corridor and looked around. There was a series of doors running in both directions on his side of the hallway, while the other side spotted windows. There was no one else in sight, so he decided to take a look at where he was. The same luminescence that was in his room kept the hall lit, but beyond the windows was darkness. Phineas cupped his hand over his eyes as he put his head against the glass and strained to see what was out there. Something came straight at him and Phineas jumped backwards, startled. He quickly looked again and found that it was nothing more than a fish. As his eyes adjusted, he could make out the ground outside, littered with an array of kelp and other plants. Phineas stepped back and felt a pit growing in his stomach. They were underwater, possibly at the bottom of the ocean. How was this possible? He didn't know. That would explain the pressure that he felt, billions of gallons of water pressing in around him. Frantically, he began trying the other doors and calling out for William and Abigail. He received no response from the ones that were locked, and the ones that weren't were empty. He had almost given up hope of seeing another living being when he heard something from farther down the hall. Again, louder this time, Phineas distinctly heard a woman screaming. At once, he knew that it couldn't be Abigail, though stranger things had happened. Whether it was or not, it didn't matter. The screams were getting closer, and he steeled himself for whatever it was heading his way. The hallway curved outward, about fifty yards away. Somewhere, just beyond that bend, Phineas heard footfalls approaching quickly. He opened one of his pouches and withdrew his collapsible Tesla rod. Flicking it open, he then pressed himself along the outer windows in order to keep himself from being seen for as long as possible. That wasn't as long as he had hoped. Rounding the bend, a young woman wearing a sheer, lightweight dress ran past him. She slowed for a moment, and their eyes locked. At that point, Phineas was mesmerized. The woman was one of the most beautiful he had ever laid eyes upon. Her skin, though having a light blue tint to it, was flawless. Deep green eyes were set above an aquiline nose, which was perfectly centered above a full set of the deepest red lips. Greenish-blue hair spilled down her back and curled as if framing her body. She quickly stopped and did something in a foreign language, though not knowing how, he immediately knew that it meant, Help me! And without hesitation, he obeyed the command. A second set of footfalls approached, and, without thinking... Phineas raised his Tesla rod and activated it, sending its charge into the unsuspecting pursuer. 
An inhuman scream echoed throughout the corridor, and the stench of charred flesh filled the air. The antagonist was wet when the charge hit him, amplifying the shock to his system. He shuddered until Phineas released the switch, and he then fell to the ground, motionless. It was then that Phineas realized it wasn't a man who was chasing the girl, but some sort of mutation. Lying on the floor was one of the ugliest creatures Phineas had ever seen. It had the body of a man, though it was covered in spiny protrusions with the coloring of sea coral. Its head was like that of a squid with tentacles dropping from all around the base of its skull, and its mouth was a beak, sharp and deadly. The creature's eyes, though now vacant, held an intelligence not normally seen in aquatic life. The thing, whatever it was, was not natural. It was an aberration, or a deliberate experiment. Phineas poked it with the rod, and then nudged it with his foot. When he got no response, he turned to the woman. She stared at him for a second, and then said something in her language. When Phineas didn't respond, she tried other languages. First, one that sounded like ancient Egyptian, then another that he didn't recognize. Bonjour? Ciao? Ahoy, matey! That I understand, said Phineas. Arg, you be a scurvy dog, then, the woman said. No, no, just American. Then why didn't you just say so? My Greek and Hebrew are very rusty, she stated. And there are more of these things following you? Phineas asked. He was alone, fortunately. Thank you for your help. I owe you my life, she responded, still shaking from the ordeal. Two of the doors across the hall opened, and William and Abigail exited. They didn't look any worse for wear. However, Abigail was favoring her left arm. Is someone making fried calamari for dinner? asked William. It smells delicious. Where was all that commotion out here? William looked at the prone squid man on the floor. What on earth is that thing? That's dinner. Have fun filleting it. How did you get out without picking the lock? asked Phineas. Really, Phineas, haven't you learned how to just unlock a door? Abigail scolded. She looked at the other woman. Who's your friend? she asked, with a very suspicious tone in her voice. Phineas looked at the woman and back at Abigail, as if he had been caught in an inappropriate situation. I am... Um, uh, she's... The woman stepped forward. This man, the most kind Phineas, has rescued me from this creature's clutches. Allow me to properly introduce myself. I am Ashira, Princess of the Kingdom of Atlantis. Listening to Big World Network.